Hello everyone and welcome to Quality Old Games. Today we are making a short guide to Byzantine Empire in Medieval to Total War. And as you can see, the Byzantine Empire is a bit fragmented, but still in quite decent position. Especially the city of Constantinople will be quite a hub of a trade. As you can see, these buildings there do at least some increase to trade at already. But once you capture some additional port towns, for example Iraklion and for example Smyrna, Rhodes, then the trade income in the capital there will explode. So it's imperative that you keep Constantinople because it's a very rich city. Um, at the same time, um, you should perhaps convert Corinth in the beginning of the game to a city instead of a castle, because it's quite secure here, especially if you conquer Iraklion at some point, and then Durazzo here. So it's very unlikely that enemy army will assault Corinth. And of course cities make more money than castles, so it's grounded to convert it. In my campaign playthrough with hardest difficulties, I found that the public order is not too much of an issue for at least Byzantine Empire. So basically a decent sized garrison and building um, garrisons and the buildings that improve public order, namely this construction chain beginning from town hall, and this construction chain beginning from brothel and of course the churches will do quite nicely in keeping up the public order in check. Uh, also, of course, you want to convert the people a bit by bit to your religion, so that will also increase the public order. And about the initial choices in the game, uh, quite a few people recommended for me to attack east, to take out Turkey. Uh, and I actually didn't do that. I charged to the west or northwest. And my reasoning for that is that um, you will have easily two castles here. And basically if you end up in war with Turkey, they can rather easily keep the Turks at bay. And uh, of course you have one castle here, and you should also capture Rhodes rather soon, right after Smyrna, if that's possible, then you will have an additional castle here as well. So I think with these four castles there, so of course you will need to convert Nikaya to a, a castle, but with these four, I think you can keep Turkey quite well uh, at bay. Then there are some other settlements that are rather easy to capture. Sofia, Bucharest and Durazzo. And um, your emperor is quite a military commander, so of course he should be leading the northern army here. And uh, I guess only after capturing these rebel settlements you need to make the choice whether to attack the Turks or push towards west or northwest. Um, my reasoning for not attacking east is that um, the settlements here in the west are more numerous and they are in closer proximity to each other, mostly, here, especially in northern Italy and the surrounding regions. And at the same time, the Turks will act as a buffer, buffer uh, against Mongols when they emerge. So you don't need to worry about the Mongols too much, as the Turks take the brunt of their assault. Of course, the uh, Russians may take some hit from the Mongol invasion as well. If you decide to push uh, northwest, I found out that uh, Yassi, Halik and Thorn make 
quite nice defensive position in the eastern border. So all of these are castles or wooden castles or whatever they are. But uh, you can upgrade them to castles quite easily. Or they have been upgraded to castles when you manage to conquer them. And um, I would recommend that you take Venice out first. So if you decide to go at war against the western factions. So Venice would be the first target. Because you can uh, take this Iraklion from your rear. And Regusa. Ragusa is quite close by. And after you have secured this area, your position here is uh, comparatively strong. Uh, Venice might be a bit too well defended at this point to assault that city, but perhaps Zagreb uh, could be taken. And it's likely that uh, Hungary will join the war, especially uh, if uh, you are playing with harder difficulties. So you might need to take their areas as well to keep your northern border secure. And if you manage to get that kind of area, you are in rather good position, since you will have a decent amount of castles in here in the northern and western fronts as well. So you can make the Vardarotai units, which I think are one of the best missile cavalry units in the game, and uh, clearly the best Byzantine Empire unit in the game, in, in campaign, in my opinion. So I think missile cavalry units will work quite well, especially in the European front, as they tend to have um, quite a lot of infantry. Of course, Milan and uh, Venice will have those pesky uh, crossbow militias and Pavis crossbowmen and so on. They might be quite difficult, but I think you can handle them. But um, these other uh, factions you will encounter here should be rather easy to take on with missile cavalry. Of course, the Poland have Polish nobles, which are uh, javelin throwing missile cavalry. They might uh, cause you some difficulties, but if you manage to uh, micro your units well enough, I think you should be able to handle them rather easily. So, after you have this area here secured, I think you should push towards Italy. These are very lucrative cities here. You get very much loot from sacking them. And of course, usually... I think Palermo, Cagliari and Ajaccio are rather poorly defended and you can get a chain of castles here as well. So they should be able to keep your southern border secure. It's likely that the Moors will try to take at least these two settlements so keep them manned well enough. And it's likely that the Turks will try their luck at some point. So keep these castles also rather well manned. In my campaign playthrough, Nicosia and Rhodes stayed pretty much safe. Once you have um, your wars going well and you are pushing forwards in this European front here, you might want to start having some ideas about how to take Jerusalem. So, your victory condition is holding 45 regions, including Rome and Jerusalem. Rome will come quite easily as you take Italy, as the Papal States will have about one decent army, and that's pretty much it. But then you need to start thinking about these eastern provinces. And if you ha have upgraded Nicosia into castle, you should be able to recruit those Vardarotai and Byzantine cavalry. And especially if you have a general here, these areas contain quite a lot of mercenaries. And at least in my campaign playthrough, Antioch and Adana were neutral settlements quite far into the game. So you might be able to gain a foothold here to make it easier to capture Jerusalem. Of course, another option is to just 
put an army to a decent sized fleet and sail towards Jerusalem and try to take it right away. Of course, if you are using miss missile cavalry, you should try to use such quantities that the besieged enemies will try to sally forth. And uh, you should be able to quite efficiently uh, take down those uh, enemies that uh, come to challenge you, because you can keep your distance and pepper them with arrows as long as you have those arrows. And if you deem that uh, you don't have enough troops to win the melee there, then you can withdraw and besiege the city or castle next turn again. And the garrison should be weaker as you have inflicted casualties there. But uh, especially as long as you have arrows, you should try to maintain your distance from the enemy, because uh, they are kind of free kills if the enemy cannot do anything against you. Of course, you need to be wary of enemy uh, missile units, especially archers, crossbowmen and enemy missile cavalry, but you should have ranged superiority in most of the fights. And about what to construct in the cities, I think you should focus on economy. So check how much the mines will make. I guess 200 is kind of the default, so mines in Thessalonica would be rather good. Of course, ports are rather good as well. Not in the early game, but in late game especially. And of course, roads will bring some additional trade income. And then these grain ex exchanges and markets. Mm, in my experience in Medieval 2 Total War, I don't think the merchants are too good. Of course, you can find some reasonable resource to trade, especially here from the Africa, for example, ivory. Or if you can find hmm, some gold here somewhere, there, that's quite decent. But it's rather difficult to get in there. And as you can see, the other resources here, I'm not certain if, if uh, getting merchants is worth the effort. So these guys, this is level 3 merchant and if you bring it to the silver you get about 100 florins per turn. I think you should get a bit more, since recruiting a merchant will cost you 550. And if they are low tier merchants it's, it's highly probable that some enemy merchant will buy them out and you will lose your income. So I don't think these merchants are really worth it. But if you like to micromanage and so on, I think they will pay themselves back, but uh, it will take time and so on. And about the units, I think you might want to see my unit roster tier list from for Byzantine Empire. There I have analyzed the units and their qualities, especially for my game, uh, gameplay style for the campaign, but uh, in a nutshell, make these three units as they are easy to make and you only need to have the castle upgrade for the main building chain here. So you can recruit those then. No high investments, but very good units, especially these um, Vardariotai. Decent enough uh, melee stats and high missile damage. And good morale, good stamina. They are just wonderful units. So, here is my uh, quick guide how to get things started with Byzantine Empire. And I forgot to mention that if you are aggressive enough and move fast enough, you might be able to avoid completely the Mongol threat, especially if you head west first. first. Because at least in my campaign playthrough, the Mongols uh, emerged several turns before I finished the campaign, so actually I didn't catch a sight of them at all. And since they have very many full army stacks, it's difficult to fight them if they manage to 
enter into like your borders and or start besieging your city, so that would be another argument for going west. But of course it's up to you. So do you agree with my assessment or did I miss something? Do you disagree? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment field below. If you like the content, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And uh, have a great rest of the day. Quality Old Games, out.